style guide tip. So something you'll see me do a lot is talk about this concept called magic numbers. I hate magic numbers. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of magic numbers. If I'm just reading this code and I see this number eight and 2000 E8, if I haven't looked at this code in a while, to me, I like, I don't know what these numbers stand for. I'd have to go to the mock V3 aggregator and see, oh, okay, it's the decimals and it's the initial answer and then come back. But if I have a ton of code that I have to do that for, this can be really annoying to do. So I hate magic numbers. Using, instead of having kind of random numbers lobbed in my code, what most developers will do is they'll turn these magic numbers into constant variables at the top of their contracts. So if we scroll at the top of our contract, maybe we'll make a new line. We can say uint eight, because decimals is gonna be uint eight, public constant decimals equals eight, and then a uint, or excuse me, and then an int 256, public constant initial price equals 2000 E8, like this. And then what we can do down here is we can say, instead of eight, we'll say decimals. And instead of 2000 E8, we'll say initial price. And this makes it much easier for us to know what that eight and that 2000 stand for. That eight stands for decimals and the 2000 stands for the initial price. This makes our code much more readable. And even when I'm doing an audit report, if I'm doing a smart contract audit, this is something that I will point out. It's a lot easier to maintain readable code. And that's something that you'll hear me talk about a lot. Even this is a magic number in a, in a sense, right? I don't think it's that important for me to say, hey, this is the Sepolia chain ID though, because to me, it's kind of obvious. So it's a little bit of an art rather than a science, but a rule of thumb is I hate magic numbers and you'll see me pretty much always do this convention up here. All right, awesome.